What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Magmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, off camera here, I decided that I was going to go through the Thermal Expansion tab, our quest book, and start completing all the quests for the things that we haven't really done yet. Like, we're never going to use these dynamos, so I never made them. Uh, these are all the different augments for the different dynamos. They can do other things or whatever. Uh, we have the new asthmatic press here for the compactor, which we're probably never going to use. I think that goes into this dynamo and you can use that for power. Uh, there's the parabolic flux coupling. This actually could go into our energetic infuser. That's supposed to allow uh, things that can charge in the energetic infuser to charge that much quicker. But we haven't upgraded this. I guess we can do that kit. Let's just go ahead and make the big boy kit. We'll just do everything. Make it all big and strong. There we go. So now it can hold all this stuff. And then this is supposed to allow power to be transferred as fast as possible into whatever is receiving power. But we have wireless power, so or wireless charging. Probably not going to be using that too often, I don't think, unless there's something very specific for that machine. But we made the augment, so we can throw it in there. Um, and then I made the thermal mediator. These are an interesting machine. These allow like a fully upgraded thermal expansion machine to go a little bit faster. Uh, but they do require things like water or cryothium or whatever. Yeah, improves operational speed of adjacent blocks. So if you like surround a pulverizer with those blocks, you can actually make it go a little bit faster if you wanted to. But I, I've done it before. I just don't really feel like it's worth doing. It takes up so much space and you got to worry about making all the, the coolant or whatever for it. Um, Aqueous accumulator, it's a way for us to get extra water, but we have infinite water sources, so not necessary. Nullifier is just a trash can. Yep, don't need that. And then these are all the, the different upgrades that we made, so we'll just go and put all those things away. Cool. So we have all this stuff done, which means we have a lot of rewards that we can claim. Yeah, almost a full inventory of these things. So let's start off by popping a whole bunch of these so we get some factory blocks, chemical turret, uh, flux infused shield, grilled cheese sandwich, chili dog. Speaking of all this food, I just went and I made a whole bunch more of these plum and lunches. We were running low. Uh, cashew sapling. Okay. Walnut door. <laughs> so much like random garbage. Uh, another wood door. I guess four of them. Some chiseled blocks. More chiseled blocks. We get barbecue platter, which we think we got last time or the time before. A uh, wind generator. All right, we've gotten a few of those already. Oh, it gave us two of them. That's actually kind of nice. Uh, Sunday roast. What did we get? Builder. Did we already have a builder? Builder. We did have a builder already. Okay, so we have two builders. Builders are a pretty good block, I would say. Uh, let's continue on so we get ourselves a revolver. I mean, <laughs> the advancement make my day. I don't think the revolver is actually worth using. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting thing, but realistically, it's just not worth using. Um, basic energy relay crystals. I feel like we've gone those before. Helium collector. Now, I don't think we've gone this one before, but I don't think it is like super crazy expensive or whatever. And then a smart output, which we already have two of. Okay, so we got lots of different random things. I'll keep the music disc. Uh, I th think we will keep these and the helium collector, but like pretty much everything else uh, is going to go in the garbage. We don't need that stuff. Don't really care about the revolver. These food items, I probably should just throw away. Uh, yeah, chemical turret, we're not going to do anything with. Whoop, don't throw that away. Okay. So, yeah, we'll put these food items into our fridge. Now, I moved our kitchen over here to this corner. Like, it was originally right here, and then I moved over against that wall, and then I set up uh, this whole molecular assembler thing so we had more crafting, and then it was kind of like in this little one-block space here. I was like, that's not cool. So I moved it over here so we have more room, and I used the cardboard box to move the fridge over, and it feels like half the contents on one of these lost. Like, all the, in all the stuff that was in there has gone away. So, yeah, like... We had a lot more like these food that we had received from the treasure chests or whatever. Uh, but yeah, they like half the fridge was empty when I set it back up, which is kind of unfortunate. So I guess don't use the cardboard boxes on those. 
Uh, wind generators we can set up, but again, like we're making so much power that doesn't really matter. Like how much? Oh, I guess I don't even have these connected anymore. I must have been mined <laughs> the power cable I came up here. Um, yeah, that's only making how much? Power 82 RF per take. Yeah, I guess we don't need any of these things set up anymore. We can take them all down. For some reason, I thought we still had these connected, but I guess since we have done everything with our power system now, since we switched over to wireless power and we have the induction matrix and all of this stuff, not really necessary. I guess we could take down this thing too, which has been kind of annoying me because it makes the uh, drippy water on this one block, or I guess these three blocks here. Yeah. Anyway, I'll take care of that some other time. So, uh, we've been working towards, what is it, advanced rocketry, right? We did this crystallizer last time. Let's actually grab this loot chest. Forgot to grab that. And we get a spawner seeker, which it does not look like we've gotten one of these before. Searches out the nearest spawner. I thought we had something similar to this. Whoa, what just happened there? I guess that means that there isn't a spawner nearby. Maybe that's what that means. And I think we can repair this, right? Oh yeah, okay, cool. Um, or did we have one of those in our pouch? Oh yeah, 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 we already had one of those, okay. Yeah, seem to recall using that before, but I didn't see it in the system. Uh, so anyway, we wanted to continue on with advanced rocketry here. So with these three machines, we can now make basic circuits, but we also have these other machines available over here to make, which I feel like we should get these things set up. So an electric arc furnace does require a few more of these other components uh, that we've been uh, making. So power plug, power, I think we had those on auto craft. Yeah, but we need three of them. So let's craft those up. That should satisfy the quest for that thing. Uh, we need three coils and we have aluminum coils on auto craft. I'm, again, I don't know which coils are the best. I assume somewhere that it says gold coil and copper coil, titanium, aluminum, iridium. I mean, it sounds like iridium probably is the best one. I don't know. Aluminum we already have. Let's just make three of those. If we need to change it out later, like aluminum's cheap, who cares? Uh, so then we need 81 heat proof brick. Okay, so what's a heat proof brick made of? Those are made of reinforced blast brick, regular nether brick, regular bricks, and then magma slime crystal. That makes six of those. So we need to make slimy magma mud, which is made from orange slime, magma cream, soul sand, and nether rack. Apparently it wasn't clicked on this. And we don't have any of that, apparently. Okay. So the magma slime, the orange slime, I believe you get this in the nether itself on those little slime islands that are found in the lava. So I'm gonna make a trip to the nether. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of those. Uh, this, the magma slime is just, you know, kill the, the magma cubes or blaze powder and slime balls as we all know. But anyway, let me go ahead and start working on that. I'll try and get the rest of the components crafted up for this machine and we'll try and get it hooked up. It actually took me a little bit of flying around in the nether before I found this magma slime island. But yeah, you got the trees on it where we can grow more of them. And then there is the congealed magma slime down here. This is pretty much what we're looking for. Each one of those is, was it for the orange slime? Yeah. So we should be pretty much good to go with that. And then we can also take down these for more of them and then get some of these slaplings so we can grow more of these trees if we need more of the orange stuff but honestly i think we're going to be pretty good as it is um so anyway i'll continue on here make uh some of the magma slime that we need and then oh, actually these turn into magma slime don't they these magma blocks don't they uses i feel like you craft those with magma slime shouldn't they uncraft is there a way to... Oh, okay, so a pulverizer, you can take those and get the magma slime out. Let's just vein mine a whole lot of these real quick. Yep, and then we'll get the magma slime that way. All right, and the rest of the pieces that we needed are all right here. So I made the advancement feel the heat. Electric arc furnace, sweet. All right, we didn't even read the text for this thing, 
Uh, this says the electric arc furnace is a big multi-block machine that can heat things a lot using RF. Follow the blueprint provided in by the hollow projector. There are 11 blocks in total in the structure where input or output hatches can be placed. Uh, once built, right click the electric arc furnace to use it. Put your input in the input hatch. Uh, the main use of the furnace is to make steel from iron and charcoal, titanium from rutile ore, and silicon ingots from sand. All of them are used in several crafting recipes. Okay. Well, a lot of this stuff, iron and charcoal to make steel, we already got that taken care of. Titanium from rutile ore, though, this is something that we haven't done yet, and I believe that's what we're going to need to do in the future. So that's pretty important. And then silicon ingots from sand, I think that's also pretty important as well. Let's see. Silicon ingot. What are these used for? Those are used for various things, but haven't we been able to make these already? Yeah, so silicon already transmutes directly into that. So maybe we don't need it for that. Maybe just the titanium from rutile ore is going to be the big plus for this one. So we need the uh, the hollow projector, hollow projector, this guy. And then we want to change this to the electric arc furnace. So what does this thing look like? It's quite big. It looks like it fits in our space here, so that's nice. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and place all these things. The power comes in from the top blocks. I don't know if all three of these have to get power or if just one of them gets enough. I'm not really sure how this all works. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, here's our next multi-block structure. Yeah, we got our electric arc furnace all hooked up. Um, so I did try different combinations of the coils. Yeah, we originally had the aluminum coil in here. And when you look in this machine, it says speed, right? So when I had all three aluminum, it said like 1.95x or something. So it made it a little bit faster than default. I tried then putting in the top tier, iridium. I remembered that iridium, we are collecting iridium ore. We have ingots. So we can use this stuff kind of freely. Don't Can't just waste and build out of the material, but, you know, we can make stuff. So I put in three of those, and then we get the 8x speed. But then that got me thinking, what about the titanium? So I made one titanium coil, and I replaced one of the iridium with titanium, and that brought us down to a five point something X speed. So yeah, it looks like the Iridium is the best. Okay, so we'll probably just be using Iridium going forward for anything that requires coils or whatnot. Yeah, especially since we can get it pretty easily. But this thing should be set up and we should be able to do some things with it. So if I get some sand, it said that we can make the, the um, what was it? Silicon bulls or something out of it, silicon ingots. So let's see. Yeah, that goes actually. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, that's making it quite quickly. But we don't really need to do it this way. We are automatically making silicon thanks to our um, stonework factories that we have down below. I don't know if I ever showed you guys that I added in more of these. Well, okay. Well, I hit all the icons to save frame rate. But anyway, we have glass here. We're making regular stone. We have silicon being generated here. And then I think that's it for those particular machines. Yep. Anyway, so we are making all sorts of silicon automatically. Definitely don't need to worry about making the silicon ingots. If we can just craft those into each other somehow, I'm sure we can. Anyway, maybe or dictionary convert the forge lexicon, something along those lines. Anyway, um, so we should be able to claim a reward for this particular machine. Let's claim it and we get ourselves TNT. Okay, I think that, that might be the first time. I don't remember getting it before, uh, but we have TNT in the system, so maybe we have. It's been a while. Anyway, uh, so we have a lathe and a rolling machine. So again, more multi-block structures, more things to set up. I'll go ahead and craft all these things. Again, iridium coils for this. Yeah, I'll craft all these things. We'll get the multi-block set up, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So a few more of our advanced rocketry machines have been laid out. So we just need to right-click on them to convert them into the things that they're supposed to be. So this had an input hatch and an output hatch here, and I just started running some applied energistics cabling in here 
so we can do some things. So that input hatch is going to need an interface. I should probably craft up, I don't know, like five of those. We're going to be needing those. And then the uh, output hatch, we can just do like export or I'm sorry, import buses. Do like five more of those. I mean, we could use like regular other pipes and pipe into the interface or whatever. And I do that a lot, but you know, change it up every now and then. We don't really have to worry about channels since we have that full applied energistics controller going on with all the P2Ps and stuff like that. Uh, so we need those interfaces here. So we can get rid of that, put an interface right like so, and then we can do an import right here. And we'll probably want acceleration. Let's grab, well, I don't know, let's like 30 of those. Well, five of those we can start putting into this one anyway and get this thing fully set up. Okay, so our lathe is 100% done. Over here we have the rolling machine that we just set up. I haven't tried messing with this one yet at all, but it did require two output hatches and two input hatches. I'm not really sure why it requires that many. Maybe some recipes require more than four items. Don't know. Anyway, let's right click on this. So this guy, yep, that's what we're looking like. Uh, so the output hatch is on the, on this side. I put the cables on the bottom so we could just import from here without having to worry too much about it. So I'll do that. And then, yeah, we have our acceleration cards ready to go. Uh, again, we could just do like pipes, like uh, item conduits or something into an interface if we wanted to, but we're just gonna do it this way. Uh, so there's that and that. All right, so those are fully done. And then this over here, we had two inputs. And for right now, until I know that we need a second input, we're just gonna put an interface. And we're just gonna call that good. All right, so that is for our rolling machine. Now, I'm not entirely sure that these interfaces, when we look over here on the interface terminal, if it says rolling machine or if it just says item input. Uh, how about if we search for rolling? It doesn't show rolling, so I wonder where those, uh, those interfaces are being... Okay, so we just have ones that are called input hatches. Yeah, those are probably ones that we're gonna wanna rename the interfaces that are attached to these so we know what machine those are on. So I will eventually get around to doing that. Uh, but yeah, we had a few more machines over here. So we had an output hatch and input hatch. This is for a crystallizer. So I will place interface here and then we needed an import bus on this guy. Yep. Then we can right click on here and get those put in. And then this was our cutting machine. So output hatch on this side, they're changing it up. And then the input hatch on this side with an interface. Cool. So with this setup like this, and we're coming in from the blocks from the bottom, like we can do this in such a way where we don't even see any of the exposed wiring. But some of these, yeah, we can't quite do that because we need to put the interface over here. But anyway, some of those will look a lot cleaner. Uh, this one over here, we could probably do the same thing, uh, change this so it's all on the bottom. So all we just see is this machine here, a precision assembler. Mm hmm. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and get a few more of this stuff buttoned up and then we will continue on, guys. So all the machines are cleaned up. Everything looks nice and clean in this room. Yeah, one of the only things that I had to do slightly differently was on this machine, the uh, export or the import buses, I had to put these uh, cable facades on there. So I had to remove the output hatches and place them on the import buses. Otherwise, you could kind of see through the block here down underneath and that looked a little weird. But yeah, other than that, like everything went pretty smoothly. Everywhere that we can do a connection from underneath, we are doing a connection from underneath. And everywhere that there is an interface exposed, I just changed it into the cable interface just to make it look a little bit more clean. But yeah, all these machines are ready to go. Yeah, pretty cool. So the next step is, is to make these basic circuits. So we pretty much need these basic circuits for everything going forward. Well, not everything, but it, is, it says in here that's the most common. Anyway, it says basic circuits are essentially a crafting component made using the crystallizer, cutting machine, and the precision assembler. They're not the only component that require this processing chain, but they're the most used ones. To make the basic circuit, First, make some silicon in your electric arc furnace. We can skip this. Turn it into a silicon bool in the crystallizer. We have to do that. Cut it into silicon wafers using the cutting machine and then assemble them with the required components in the precision assembler. And finally, cut the result into the cutting machine. So 
we should be able to come over here and make all sorts of patterns for all of this. So this is saying we need to make a silicon bull. The silicon bull. So this is going to be a processing pattern and I assume we can click this button. Cool. And this goes in the crystallizer. So crystallizer. Yep. We got that here. Okay. So the next step is we need to cut it into silicon wafers. So this is done this way. Okay. And that's in the cutting machine using the cutting machine. Okay. So cutting machine. It's so much nicer having all these machines labeled. Again, you can rename an interface and then when you set it down, it changes the name here on the interface terminal. If you break it with a pickaxe, you lose it and it just turns back into an interface. But I think if you right click with the wrench or maybe the AE2 wrench, you keep the name. Anyway, um, so we have the silicon wafers uh, using the cutting machine, assemble them with the required components in the precision assembler. So we're trying to make basic circuit. Let's search now the basic circuit. Okay, so yeah, the cutting machine takes the basic circuit plate and cuts it into this again. We didn't just do that, did we? Cutting, I was just making things. So we have the silicon wafers, and then we need to turn those into this recipe here. So we need the cutting machine once again. Okay. And this is called a basic circuit. So I guess the first step is let's go over here and make sure that we can make basic circuits. Watch everything turn on, make sure your, everything's working. So basic circuit plate. Oh, did I, oh, I thought that was what we already did. No. Okay. So there is more to this. Yeah. So we turn that silicon wafer. Or we take the silicon bull and we're doing a silicon wafer. And I thought that's what this was, but no, that is different. So we have to do the precision assembler recipe. Okay, let's take a step back here. So this guy, we need this like so. So we are going to need a way to make conductive iron grinding balls, which I'm sure is pretty simple. Blank pattern. Let's start crafting up like a hundred of those because we're going to need them. We have one more for right now. So conductive iron grinding ball, and that is made using conductive iron. We need to turn that back into this recipe here. Cool. So I'll place that somewhere, find a home for it. Doesn't really matter. How about right there? Okay. So now we know, or I guess the system knows how to make the conductive iron grinding balls, and we don't have a recipe to make conductive iron. So that's probably the next step we need to do. Uh, Bling patterns still not what are we waiting on for those? Oh, it's making them right now. Okay, so we need to make conductive iron, and that is done in the alloy smelter using iron and redstone. We need a processing pattern. Like so. Okay, so alloy smelter. Okay, we have why do we have these recipes on me? How did that happen? Uh, IO circuit board. <laughs> How did that get into my inventory? That is just regular. Oh no, that's in the precision assembler. Mm -hmm. Not sure how they got in my inventory. And then the basic circuit plate. That is made in the precision assembler as well. So both of those go in here. Okay. So we got that figured out. So we're still trying to make the basic circuit, basic circuit plate. So we have this available. We have that available. So now we need the apatine electron tube. So we can do that in this guy with liquid glass, the appetite and that. All right. And that was the advanced, uh, carpenter. No thermionic. Okay. So let's try to make that. If I tell it to make the electron tubes, does it actually make those? It does. Okay. So we should be good to go now. If we want to make basic circuits, let's see if we can do this now. Craft and start. Looks like things are happening. Things are happening. I saw something happen over there. 
Uh, there we go. Basic circuits. Very, very awesome. Okay, so we're now able to craft these whenever we want to. That's really, really good. Um, so, oh, you know what? We need those in our inventory to complete the quest. So let's do that. There we go. All right, so let's click this one. Uh, we have like three things to claim. So let's claim those up real quick. So we get an elytra, which we've gotten before. Hearty breakfast, and we get ourselves a sleeping mat. Okay, things we don't really need. So moving on, we need an electrolyzer or the advanced circuit. What does an advanced circuit cost? So that's an advanced circuit plate in the cutting machine, and the advanced circuit plate... Okay, so intricate circuit board, which we can make in our carpenter. The advanced carpenter, do we have that set up using water? I think so, right? Yeah, we have that thing. Okay, so we should be able to get this thing set up. Uh, anything else special about this? The intricate circuit boards. All right, so it does require... Actually, have we even set up a recipe to do this? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the recipe set up in our advanced carpenter. We've already seen this thing work before, but we just need to get the recipes hooked up so it can craft all of the things required to make the intricate circuit board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, including the ultimate control circuits, which I do believe we already have set up on auto craft. And then besides that, we need a redstone alloy grinding ball. So that's just redstone alloy made in the furnace, silicon redstone, easy. And then silicon wafer. Cool. Let me get those recipes hooked up and we'll continue on. Well, that should just about do it. We can have an advanced circuit plate turning into the advanced circuit. And we put that into, I believe that's the cutting machine, advanced circuit. I made two of these advanced circuit plates to make sure these things actually work. In order to make that, yeah, we need these different circuit boards. And in order for the intricate circuit board to work, I had to individually craft each one of these and then replace the recipe uh, where these go into this item manually because when you do the shift click from GEI, it doesn't find these items. I guess there's different NBT data or something. Anyway, so yeah, intricate circuit board. I made sure that all works. So we are good on that. So let's try and craft this guy up. That should be very, very fast. Should be. <laughs> okay, so advanced circuits. We have basic circuits and advanced circuits on auto craft. And that is going to open. Oh, well, I know I need those. Advanced circuit. That's going to open us up into the rest of advanced rocketry, which is pretty cool. So let's take that one and we'll just claim all these unclaimed ones. Wait, I only got one loot chest. What happened here? So this gives me a loot chest and this one did not. Oh, maybe that wasn't selected. I don't know. It says it's clean, but we only got one loot chest. Am I crazy? No, we only got one. Oh, well, that's fine. It's probably not something we need anyway. Actually, overclocker upgrades 12 of them. That's not a bad reward. Yeah, we've already <laughs> upgraded our IC2 machine, so not quite necessary though. But anyway, yeah, so we have these done, we have those done. That's going to open us up into the electrolyzer, getting into the rocket assembly machine and all of this kind of stuff. And also that's going to start getting us into the space station assembler. So yeah, this is like pretty much the stepping stones into leaving the overworld and going into space. That's going to be pretty awesome. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.